and we have a quorum. I will call the meeting for the Conservation Commission for October 18th open. I will entertain a motion to accept the October 4th minutes. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Move and second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And right after that, we have a new public hearing, and I will read that into the record. Under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Mass General Law is amended in the West Bridgewater Wetland <coughs> Protection Bylaw Rules and Regulations. The West Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a hearing the 18th of October, 2016, in the McDonald Brown Conference Room, 65 North Main Street. A notice of intent filed by Thomas Przerski for on behalf of Ryan Haynes for redevelopment of a commercial site, repaving and stormwater improvements at 385 West Center Street. Here's one more, Tom. Uh, okay. Oh, sure. Are you all set? Thank you. We need the... Those go to me. I got them. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Nope, that's okay. Uh, my name is Tom Pizerski. I'm from Merrill Engineers, located in Hanover. And we're representing Haynes Construction. Haynes Construction took over the site from, bought the site from D'Angelo's. So it used to be the old D'Angelo's warehouse for all the uh, restaurants they had. And uh, Haynes has gone ahead and upgraded the existing septic system, which all that's outside of a 100-foot buffer zone. And now they're looking to do the next big phase of the site renovation, which is to repave the parking areas. So as a part of that, um, we have an existing approved wetland line here. So we do have jurisdictional buffers cutting right up into it. You can see under existing conditions, the building is very close to the wetlands. The parking lot, which is right along this line here, is right onto the wetland area here. It looks like that part of this, what happened is years ago, they put on a wetland ditch around here, which is now vegetated, so now it's part of the wetland community. But it's a pre-stormwater um, regulation ditch, so you can't take credit for it. So we went out, we did soils. It does have some decent soil up top, but it has a very high groundwater elevation up there. So we designed the system in accordance with DEP stormwater regulations to the maximum extent practicable for what we have here. You can't get any big deep structures in. We're really limited to what we can do for treatment, but I think we have a nice treatment program here. You can see we have the hay bales here. The first part of the treatment program is we've got a um, Infiltration P-stone diaphragm on both sides. That's a two foot by two foot deep diaphragm that helps the water recharge. And then we have a grass water quality swill in here um, to help with the attenuation. And then we've made them as long as we can to lengthen out the treatment program. Nice and shallow, they're about six inches deep. This one here, we're able to squeeze in a sediment trap. And it's actually a good thing because of the way it bends around. And then we've got a nice long rain garden in here for treatment with an emergency spillway. Um, same in here, we put a rain garden in here with an emergency spillway. Um, we've set those spillways, the spillways are sized to handle 100 year post-development storm. And a nice concrete curb that you put in flush, they're very easy to maintain. So ever if there's any adverse flooding because they don't maintain a lease pile up, it's easy, you just clean it off so the gra it gravity falls again. So it's, it's much better than just putting stone riprap, you have a set flat concrete structure to clean off. Um, in your submittal, we provide a during construction maintenance uh, program for the stormwater system. How the contractor shall execute in a responsible manner. And the first part is to install erosion control measures. Um, the second part, it walks them through good housekeeping measures for construction. And then the other thing that we have in there is a long-term pollution prevention plan, also called, called a post-development plan that is done in accordance with DEP's policy, so it gives a nice recipe for them to follow <coughs> as far as um, how to take care of the long-term components of this system, when to maintain it, when to replace it, and how to do that. Um, and as always, that should be part of the order conditions for petrol condition. Um, on the back side here, we provided all the nice details for each component. Um, also, they're putting handicap parking in there, so that's really just a federal requirement. How to pave it, but more importantly, we detail out all the stormwater components except one item. Uh, we forgot to give you a planting plan 
for the rain garden. So I am going to be on the phone to Mr. Holmes from ECI tomorrow morning. That's my fault, and we will get you a planting plan to accompany this. That's all I have. Well, you answered my first question, was well, a maintenance plan, so well, that's taken care of. <laughs> John, do you have? Um, we, um, I did go out and witness the test pit that he dug for the determining the groundwater. And uh, so I concur with him on, on the fact that it's a high groundwater. We can't do anything other than shallow uh, swales. So I, I uh, think this is a great plan. Um, the front part, as you, on the left-hand side, as you're looking at that plan, you'll notice the trench doesn't come all the way up. Well, he's, what he has is it's all graded towards the back left-hand corner. Uh, where the parking lot makes the bend and it'll enter in along that trench on the left and to the trench in the rear and uh, infiltrate, get cleaned by the swale. So I think it's an excellent job, good presentation. Um, we will put in a condition about the snow removal and it was in his maintenance plan anyway about not putting snow in there but we'll make sure that it's part of the special conditions so there's not piles of snow on it. And I think there's plenty of room on the front left-hand side to stack up snow if it's one of those seasons where we have snow after snow. Um, so I'm recommending that it be approved and issue a standard order of conditions with some of the items that I mentioned in my report. Anybody in the audience, questions, comments? So everything that's around the building, the parking area and all that stuff, is all black top. It is. In fact, we're removing black top here, so you can have black top five feet further away from the resource. And you're not changing any difference in the drainage from the Ac from the actually uh, improving because they've got some old catch basins yeah. in there. They're just not. Working. It's basically yeah. You're just making a change to make it better. Yes. Right. Well, we're regraded so it gets in the stormwater system. So everything's being ground up and regraded. Okay, that answered my question. What prompted <laughs> only? Mm, nothing's mm -hmm. being done with the building. I mean, other than not. You making any changes no, to the building to make water? No. Just all the inside. They already I have heard. Uh, roof leader outlets around the building, so we're leaving those alone, and we're preserving the grass strip here for fire protection for ladders to That's get up cool. there. In yeah. utility guys, all the HVAC stuff is on this side. Um, they used to have trucks over here. We're not. This is no longer going to be a truck bay over here, so you won't have heavy truck traffic on this side. It'll be over on this side. It'll be the stormwater system between that and the wetland. If the emergency spillways actually do overflow, mm -hmm. uh, say a catastrophic uh, downpour or whatever, mm -hmm. what's the uh, effect there uh, into the wetland? Well, that's why after the spillways, you're going to have uh, riprap energy dissipators after it. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's big three to six inch riprap um, coming out the whole width, and then it slopes it downhill, so it slows it down. Okay. So there's no adverse effect to the Wetland. No, that's, there are, they're adequately sized to hold in place. Okay. The stone's uh, heavy enough to hold in place. Okay. Now the big thing is they maintain the system so it doesn't get sediment that, overload. And that, if they do that... The that'll be in the order conditions. Yeah. <laughs> what about the yeah. for that? Oh yes, and uh, because they are working within 50 feet, which is already a disturbed 50-foot buffer, um, recommending they be granted a waiver on that requirement to kind of maintain the status quo anyway. And such an improvement is the right. reason for granting it. Okay. Anybody else? Anything? No. If not, I'll entertain a motion to close. Well, can we, can we talk here? Or? Yep. Okay. 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 Um, I have just a couple questions. Um, do you have an extra set of plans? I will take one of these small ones. Okay. Um, and you are, sir? Um, my name is Bob Burrell, and I would be the abutter to where all the water's running to, to mm -hmm. the far left back. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just want to, you know, yeah. The, yeah, the things that you're saying, I mean, obviously, I'm really not up on some of the stuff that mm -hmm. you're talking about. So, I mean, I would like to just at least run this by my people and just to make sure because I have not wanted. I don't well, anymore. the fact of the matter is, you got first thing is you got less pavement than there now. So there's mm -hmm. going to be some pavement removed. Yeah. The second thing is the stands right now is you have no stormwater management control measures. Yeah. 
So all that water, and the, the system they have has completely failed. All that water goes right into the wetlands. So right now what we're doing is we are adding all this extra stormwater volume and treatment in here yeah. that you don't have right now, and a valve to control it, hold it back, and treat it. You've got the same here. And we're taking it and making sure that instead of just sheet flows off, <coughs> it's a controlled release. Now, you can see here, there is a deep ditch that's probably about three or four feet deep. Mm -hmm. That water is being directed directly to that old drainage that was put on when they built the building. Mm -hmm. And this water flows this way, it flows downhill, and it flows underneath West Street. Okay. So it, it's being, actually, you're going to get less runoff towards your property. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I don't know what that means as far as your vote goes, but it seems like I should at least be able to make sure that what this gentleman is saying, you know, agrees with what my people say. I would say you have um, ten, 10 days from the issuance, which will be Thursday. Okay. So you have between now and Thursday plus 10 more days after that. Okay. No, that's fine. To uh, have it looked at, and then, and then you could uh, appeal any any decision. Sure. Again, like I said, some, I don't doubt with this. Yeah, I mean, just have I just don't know. I just don't know Make exactly what yeah, it means. That's, yeah. 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 that's why we have these. That's why we have the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably. if you, you think you have problems, appeal. Have you guys call me too if you have any questions. I'll answer it. Okay. Yeah, Merrill's been around for 34 years. I'm pretty well known. Okay. You do things right. Yeah, no problem. And no, it's just normally, not. normally these situations with these things, they tend to benefit the abutters, considering there is nothing there now. And then normally, even if there was, the whole purpose of that is to not allow any more that's going into the wetland, in the wetland. Okay. With all due respect, now. okay, I've been there for 35 years, and I've never had an abutter really be working in my best interest. Oh, okay. I hear you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm right beside a truck rental, and um, and Enterprise Truck Rental just went on the other side of me, and uh, I can't think that it's uh, it's all worked out for me. Okay, so. Is it Enterprise Truck or a car rental? It's Enterprise Truck. Off of its way? Yeah. It's the, it's the Is that truck. what's... It's the truck division. Yeah, that runs. That well, runs. I thought they were putting cars in it. I thought there's all cars on the back. Well, just take a look at the sign on the building. Okay. Enterprise mm. truck. Mm. That might be a. Um, <laughs> I don't uh, think their permit was for trucks. I think it was for cars. But uh, I, I was at the hearing, and I mean, they definitely came with. It's a, they they want to put you know 16 foot doors in the building, so it was definitely for trucks. Okay. But again, like I said, I don't know if that's handed there, but it definitely says Enterprise truck on it. Um, so, okay, that's all. I mean, if that's what I have, I mean, I'll run it by, and um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just come right in touch with you. And I yeah, that's fine. Just go right from there. Yeah, I mean, we'll, our neighbor's a good, he's a good neighbor, and okay. he'll help you out. And like I said, there's less pavement, and now you have no, nothing to hold the storm water back, and sure. now we're putting in infiltration swales, infiltration grass, sump swales, mm -hmm. sediment traps, the cold water, and the rain gardens. Okay, fine, very good, yeah. appreciate it. Okay. There was another. I just had a question. <laughs> it sounded like, and I'm not in a butter, but um, that periodic maintenance has to go on on this. That's correct. So, do you guys go out and survey this and check off? Is there a, an assessment that's done annually, every other year? There are inspection reports that they have to keep on record. They have to have them on record for three years. And some of the commissions, they have it at their liberty to condition that, but they provide them the reports. That's, that's what we're going to do. All right. And the second question that I have related to that is, let's just say that property becomes abandoned in the future. Mm -hmm. lack, the lack of future maintenance on that, that new infrastructure that you built, is that going to make the property worse if it's not maintained over the long term or better than it is today? If they don't maintain it, You'll have extra storm water storage, basically. What if it's if if it's abandoned, as you say? Mm -hmm. Well, they won't be sanding it at that point. So, whatever silt or sediment did get into those basins, that's what you have. Is you're going to have right now, even if it got abandoned and this was built, you're in a better situation than than there is now, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, you're capturing everything that's yeah. run off and directing it. Yeah. Um, and this is a natural system, the rain got grow, so that's it's it's not like other systems like um, a, 
a seepage pit that is in the middle here, for example, that's all clogged. And the rain garden, the, the plant uptake will help take that up. You've got the grass swale, which, which also has a um, granular treatment layer underneath it, will help suck, suck it up as well. Um, it's, a, it's a good system, especially for what we have, because he's right, you do have high ground water up there. Any other questions? Mm -mm. If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. Make that motion. A second. We can say that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. I'll entertain a motion to issue a standard order of conditions with the noted additions. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Move and say that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. And I will entertain a motion to grant a waiver for work within the 50 foot. I'll make a motion. And I'll second it. We can say those in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. So moved. All set. <coughs> Next on our agenda, we have a continued public hearing for 109 Spring Street, which at this point, the only thing we're really deciding today is a 53G consultant. Mm -hmm. We have two estimates in from, um, as well as the original planning board reviewer. Um, I received a call late this afternoon actually was uh, this evening from the attorney and he asked me to read this to the Commission because um, the attorney the applicant and the uh, design team uh, weren't planning to be here tonight so they he asked if I'd read this in his place <coughs> so this is from attorney Matthew Watsky and it says that um, my understanding is that the Commission has received three proposals, each of which is from a consultant with the credentials and reputation that the Commission has, has found meets its requirements. Nick Laney has submitted a proposal for initial review services for 950. He has already been engaged by the Planning Board and so he is already familiar with the project which likely has resulted in his significantly lower cost proposal. GAF Engineering's proposal for initial review services is for $19,950. Uh, <coughs> Allen and Major's proposal is for $3,450. Under General Law Chapter 44, Section 43G, the Commission may impose a reasonable fee for the employment of outside consultants. Given a choice of three equally competent consultants, it would be unreasonable to impose a fee of more than double uh, that of GAF engineering and even more than that for Allen and Major. The Commission has an obligation when imposing its reasonable fee to seek the lowest bid for competent work. Uh, what I did for the Commission is uh, copied Mass General Law Chapter 44 Section 53G and um, in it, it says that um, the it's for the imposition of reasonable fees for the employment of outside consultants, and that any appeal from the selection of the outside consultant is on the grounds only and limited to. Uh, claims that the consultant selected has a conflict of interest or does not possess the minimum required qualifications. And I don't believe there's any argument um, about the qualifications of the three firms and uh, there is no conflict of interest with the three firms because we eliminated uh, one of the possibilities uh, due to the uh, attorney mentioning that there was a potential conflict. So, um, I just wanted to make sure that the reference to the 53G law was accurate and not um, something that was interpreted in the words of uh, the email that we received. 
I will say that um, HML's proposal for $950 is for the initial fee uh, review and not for any additional, so there'd be additional charges that would come. And if that were the case, uh, and let's say they deposit 2000 there's still room to uh, pay the reviewer for additional uh, reviews. GAF Engineering's review uh, covers the initial and not any additional uh, changes after that. And the 3,450, is it, uh, from Allen and Major covers the initial uh, review and the follow-up one after some changes have been made on the first review. So it's basically two reviews. As my report indicates, all three of them uh, have worked with um, the commission. Um, HML Associates, Nick Laney, uh, is working on a subdivision down off of Lincoln and South Elm Street uh, for the planning board and was uh, reviewing it uh, for the commission. And it's dead in the water right now, so I don't think it will go anywhere. Uh, GAF worked on the high school project and um, the Allen and Major worked on the family dollar store up on North Main Street. Ordinarily, because he's apparently doing some work for the planning board now. Yes. That taken away, do you think his fee would be more in line yes. with it? Yes. I, I think it would I probably would think be. So. Yes. Because yeah. ordinarily I'd look at 950 and say, you know why compared to the others, but that makes sense. So. I mean, when you're looking at 3450 for two reviews versus 1950 for one. Yeah. Now you're pretty much yeah in the same ballpark, yeah. so it's not gonna. You know right. how much the planning board uh, engaged him for? No, I don't. Okay. No, just a question. <coughs> if the two thousand dollar deposit by chance weren't enough, we'd just say we that have. More, more be deposited. Yes, we'd ask the applicant to submit another check before we would engage the consultant to do further work, and okay. it would have to be in the treasury before we right. would spend it. All right. I mean, I don't have a preference either way. I, right. The high school was a big project, and they seem to do a good job on it. Right. And they are, but again, it's one review. Like the one with the uh, dollar screen and. Once I did that. Mm. Anybody have any preference besides? No. No. Do we want to go with GAF and and ask for more money? Or we just. Um. I don't know. I it would be fine with that. You think asking for more money if you did? Well, he's according to his email, he's pushing for the 950. Um, they don't really have any choice if mm -hmm. if you decide to go with the 3450. Um, they would have to deposit some more money and go by your mm -hmm. your uh, decision. So it's it's really a decision up to you. I think the reasonable reasonableness of the fee uh, isn't the amount. It's the type of uh, work that you expect your consultant to do. And if you expect them uh, to do, and all three of them do the same type of work, um, I don't think somebody could say that you are unreasonable by choosing the higher or the lower or the middle one. I, th I think they're all reasonable. They're all fees that are normally associated with this type of review. Uh, I could probably check the uh, three consultants for their proposals on these other projects and find that they're probably all very similar, and generally they are. And as Tim mentioned, the uh, Allen <coughs> major <coughs> proposal includes two. So if you cut it in half, it seems pretty close to what GAF had uh, put down. So they always seem to be right around the same Do we ballpark. need two? Uh, there definitely will be a change in the plans, and it will have to be reviewed more than once. 
just looking at it, I can tell. So GAF has included two reviews? Just one. Just one. one. And the uh, Allen and Major? Has two. Has two. And uh, HML is only one. Well, I guess we could move it along by going for the higher one. Otherwise, we'd have to rebid, asking for what the price on two reviews, right? We could, we could do that. We but could. You could say we would like you now to give us a proposal for the initial and the follow-up review. It's kind of difficult to know exactly how much the extra review would be, because. Right. Uh, if the applicant's engineer successfully addresses all of the initial reviews, comments, other than a couple of items mm -hmm. that they overlooked, or maybe the reviewer, in analyzing it a little more closely, uh, figured out that there were some additional things that should be done. So usually it's a lot less for the second one than it is for the first. Uh, but we could ask them to do that and provide it for it. I mean, it been times we've gone to th three or more reviews even on some of the projects so that we have asked for additional money to be put in, and it's not. Yeah, I, I think the uh, 950, per eight, what is it, HML? HML. HML. I mean, that's he's probably giving us a reasonable price because of the work he's got. Right. Should we need more reviews, he'll make a proposal. And yes. And the and uh, the builder would have to. So I'd be inclined to go with that. And then if we need reviews, then we ask for more money. That's what I say, yeah. You in favor of the little planning board's review, or you just yeah. have them send on to yeah. us? Too? I just have a question about when he's looking at it for the planning board. What direction is that for us? I mean, we have a different. Set that was of my thought. Was a second yeah. set of eyes outside of the planning I, board I, review, I think or just gave us a little more yeah. buffer so that we have a different we have circumstance <coughs> somebody else looking at it with a different set of eyes he definitely working for the planning board would be um, making sure that the the street sizes the slopes of the pipes um, those kind of things would be in compliance with planning board rules and regulations and working for us as a Commission, he would be looking at whether uh, it meets the bylaw requirements, and um, theoretically, all of the drainage would be have taken care of uh, through the review for the planning board. So mm -hmm. he'd be looking only at uh, bylaw issues and um, any uh, stormwater management issues. I personally would be more comfortable with another set of eyes, but. I just think it's in our We know there's water problems. Us. Yeah. <laughs> Having that extra set of eyes looking at a... I mean, it doesn't... I mean, it just I mean, it's not a problem. I mean, it's just another set of eyes, so... And, 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 and eyes set for us, <laughs> you know? I mean, just on our idea. So that being said, we just have to decide which one of the two. I mean, we know it's yeah. going to be at least two reviews. Right. So GAF has no reviews? Just... Um, just the initial review, and um, he did mention in his proposal that um, our review will be based on the performance standards outlined in 310 CMR 10.0, which is uh, the Mass DEP Wetland Protection Act uh, regulations. And it says it should be noted that a detailed review of the drainage calculations is anticipated to be performed through the planning board review process and therefore has not been included in our budget at this time. We have excluded fees associated with site walks, meetings, and attendance at public meetings, which generally um, the only thing that we have them do is if they care to, they can go to the site and look at it, which is usually pretty standard for most uh, reviewers. They want to see not only what's on the paper, but <coughs> with their own eyes out at the site. Uh, so 
we wouldn't have, and none of them have said that they um, would be attending the meeting because I asked them not to. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Um, Alan and Major, I think, did say they would attend. However, again, uh, as with the family dollar, I asked them not to, that I just um, covered the meetings for them with their reports. And so in the end, it did save on the um, overall cost to the, to the applicant. But um, the civil engineering scope of services is to review the town of West Bridgewater site development criteria. Um, for the Wetlands Protection Act in the Wetland Protection Bylaw. Uh, review the subdivision drawings prepared by others, which is the applicant. Um, review the proposed drainage reports for compliance with the stormwater regulations. Review the notice of intent application and materials. Provide a written summary of the findings. Perform one round of follow-up review if revisions to the site drawings are required and attendance at one public hearing. And I would just ask them that they don't have to, they, they can just send in their report. And, um, usually what happens is if there's any disagreement between the reviewer and the applicant's engineer, I usually have them talk about that together instead of waiting for the public hearing and then have to have another mm -hmm. public hearing to hear the response and then have another public hearing for the reviewer to report back on the response and after a while you find your six meetings out before they're all on the same page and I'd much rather have them talk directly with each other. So, um, looking at that proposal though, it's covering a lot more than the other one. The last one. Yeah. And that may, as John said, be less money if they don't have to go to the public hearing. And the second review may not even be, I'm just looking at 1950, if you even, not even double that, you're still going to be higher than the 34 for mm -hmm. the second review when you figure it all in. And I'm back. I mean, outside of a se second pair of eyes, the 950 looks attractive. I mean, even if he adds another $1,000, it would be 1950. My, sure. my guess is it would be probably three quarters of the 950 would be his second review um, because he's going to be sent submitting a report to the planning board and that report's going to the applicant's engineer. So in the meantime, the applicant's engineer is working out those issues <coughs> and uh, then he'll be reviewing it for the commission and um, all those drainage issues and things like that would have already been dealt Done with. Him. And so he's only got a, a few other items probably from our end mm. to make sure they uh, show on their plan. Mm. And that's why I'm thinking it's probably three quarters of the 950 would be the follow-up review for mm. HML. That's, mm. that's just a guess, nothing, nothing from him, but just my experience mm. Uh, mm. in the situations. Well, that's it's my feeling, but if the majority wants to do something else, that's fine. Is that right? <laughs> Is that both students still? No. What's the matter? We're trying to give her enough cord to oh. keep <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to finish the meeting before you put them. For some reason, this so isn't you working. Want to take, huh? Just take a vote? And So well, are we going to just eliminate the 3450? Yeah. Does anybody want to go with the highest bid? No. Okay. All those in favor of going with the lowest bid? <laughs> I was going to go for the middle one, but yeah. if we're going to go for the lowest one, there's. Okay. Three out of the yeah. five? That's fine. So then we'll entertain a motion to accept HMO. Nick's proposal. I'll, uh, I'll make the motion we accept it. I'll second it. You can second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.
Can you just go back tomorrow or something because I'm not getting charged? Hold on, hold on. We um, still need to. Awesome. Still need to vote to continue to yep. the um, next meeting, which is November first. And I will entertain a motion to continue to November first. Make the motion. Second. You can say all in favor. Aye. 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 So moved. I assume that's what you three are here for is yeah. <laughs> the November 1st, Why the next you? meeting. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> there will be some type of presentation yeah. for you to is listen six to. Houses? Um, and I don't know, have you heard anything from yeah, planning board yet? Yes, we have received Big notification. When is their meeting? November 2nd. Oh, right after yeah. our Sunday. All right. Do you think we'll actually have a presentation? I think I think so because if they're going to make one to the, the planning board the following night, they probably address some of the water concerns by HMO. Be there. I would think so, but so I thought they leave. might be here. But tonight. isn't there a like Last on minute, one no. side? Isn't there a stream that okay. comes along? All right. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I I think, John, we're under your report type stuff because oh, okay. we have. All right, we have um, Sony Road asked uh, to continue to the 1st of November because uh, they're still working on uh, trying to incorporate a lot of the concerns that were heard at the meetings uh, from both the commission and the uh, butters, and so he's needed a little bit more time. So we don't really have to do anything because it's really not a, a agenda item, but um, it's informational only. The next item is the River Street land purchase. Um, the deed was drawn up, submitted to town council. He approved the wording of it, and now is doing a title exam to make sure we have good. They have good title to give to the town, and. Um, we're kind of on track for the end of the month, but it, depending on how long it takes to run that title, it may have to be extended a little bit, which I'll have to talk to the Williamses and see if they'll uh, go along with it. And in the meantime, I've been talking to some people about the mobile home itself and how the logistics will be to get it out of there and away and disposed of. Uh, so I'll have more information as I get it for you. And um, on the wetland <coughs> complaint down at 273 South Street, um, which we talked about at the last meeting, uh, the applicant, not the applicants, the uh, landowner has um, contacted me with the fact they've asked the botanist to come out and flag it. and. I asked them to let me know when it's all done and I'll go out and meet with the landowner and go over the wetland line with them and tell them what their next step would be. So this is just informational as well, but it's at least moving in the right direction. And then uh, on the Pleasant Street uh, commercial development on the highway side of Pleasant Street, where all that construction debris is stockpiled. Um, Mr. Hargraves uh, has not contacted us to reschedule for an informal discussion of what he wants to do with that land. But his plan is, is to develop it and to crush a lot of that debris as fill around the buildings like he did on the big blue one that's completed there because everything has to be raised up uh, due to the water table which kind of says to yourself why, if it's got a lot of water table, do we have to uh, allow them to build in it? Well, it's not because it's standing in water. It's because they're such large roofs and parking that they have to dispose of their um, stormwater into structures, and we need that clean. And because it's new, not a redevelopment like tonight, they need to be uh, two feet over the water table, and so. That's the bottom of the drain system, which is the lowest part. So it's way up there, and that's why they need all that fill. And I can't wait till it's gone because it's an eyesore mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't look good. He does have it back uh, over 100 feet away from the wetlands, so it um, 
at least he's in compliance with that, but it just still is a mess. So that's all I have. Um, other than I will say we had a great day to be out at the Roselle McDonald School on Monday, Steve and I doing the scavenger hunt with the first, <laughs> second, and third grade uh, half of each class uh, on Monday, and we're scheduled to be there on Thursday to do the other half of those three grades. The kids were terrific. They mm -hmm. loved uh, doing the project, excited, running around, looking <laughs> for stuff. Um, in the meantime, the principal and a small group of the students discovered a um, caterpillar mm -hmm. and wanted to know what the caterpillar was. And I looked at it and said, it looks familiar, but I don't know, so I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I did some research on it and put it in on the Facebook page with the answer. And hopefully all the kids will look at it. And <laughs> yeah, you're on your mark. Uh, it's a... It's a... Something there. Um, yellow with black and purple type oh. coloration. And it's... Um, I wish I remembered <laughs> what it was, but I wrote it down on the Facebook. But it's um, it's a... Oh, uh, spice, spice bush butterfly. I oh. think it's it's called, and the the yeah. caterpillar is, of course, the uh, pupa stage mm -hmm. of the metamorphosis from the eggs to the pupa to the next step. Crystals. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then finally the, <laughs> the butterfly. <laughs> I like bugs. Yeah. Did you find out anything about? Pleasant Street on the other side, or the dirt? Um, no, I haven't. I've got to get down there. I think I'm more dirt, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. It's all dumped. It's, just, it's not leveled yet. Yep. Uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. I will be able to get down there, and um, I'll go right after the scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. It was a really hectic day today, huh, Kitty? Mm -hmm. It seemed like the phone rang. A lot of interruptions, yeah, with people that had emergencies and didn't know how to do this. You're right, it was your spice bush mm. swallowtail butterfly. Mm. Yes. I'll, I'll remember that. And they and they do um, like to go into the Joe Pye mm. weed, um, spice that's bushes. What, that's what's on the Facebook mm. page. Mm. That's pretty cool. Are they using for any indicators? Some of them, some of those uh, caterpillars are indicators of the winter to come. You know, the big, the black and orange. Yeah, the woolly bear. What's that called? The woolly bear. Oh, I like those pillows. Those butterflies are nice. Anybody else have anything else? Nope. At that point, then I will entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Woohoo! Moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. So moved. Yay.